go. I forgot about that part. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I actually need to make sure I've got the right mic selected. And welcome to the safety consultant podcast version of the OSHA Compliance Help Show. So this is what I do for you guys is I help you keep OSHA compliant through a few lessons at a time in this live stream. So today we are going to actually go through uh, one of the topics that I, I do get one of the most, I should say, from my new students that are coming into the compliance class that I teach, which is the Certified Occupational Safety Specialist class. And one of those is, how do you read the Code of Federal Regulations, the CFRs? Uh, during this time, if you do have any questions or comments, go ahead and put it in the chat box for me. I'm going to check my phone. So if anybody's uh, texting me or anything similar to that for questions, I'll get those as well. So I'm here to answer your questions on anything OSHA compliance, even though I'm going to focus on how to read the CFRs today. If you have a, a comment, question, or anything that's going on with your facility right now, or even if you're a consultant and you want a little second opinion for what's happening with your clients, then that's fine too. Go ahead and uh, put that into the comment box. And from the comment box, I'll be able to answer some questions for you. And so that's uh, what I'm going to work on. So let's talk about the Code of Federal Regulations. So OSHA actually has their uh, codes, all of the government agency has uh, codes of regulation. Uh, OSHA is under the Department of Labor, so they are Title 29. So that's when you're going to just see in the very beginning 29, and then you'll see CFR, which means Code of Federal Regulations, and then is the part. So the number after that is going to give you a part. So I'm going to uh, share your sc share my screen. And again, if you have any current OSHA questions, I'll help you with that. Um, current meeting for your organization, you need a little help, you need a, someone to, to walk you through anything. And that's anything, anything in OSHA, just go ahead, throw it in the comment section and I'll answer that. Uh, but for the lesson for today, I'm just gonna go ahead and help you out with, uh, with the Code of Federal Regulations. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. And of course you could just go in the comment and just say, what's up? Let me know you're here. <laughs> I would gave her that too. All right. So you're seeing the OSHA.gov website right now. So with the OSHA.gov website, uh, what you want to do is just hover over where you see standard there. Uh, this one, you'll actually need to kind of click to open. Then laws and regulation. We're going to open this one as well. Scroll down. So I mentioned... 29, which is Department of Labor for OSHA. Uh, so it's 29 CFR. And then the part is the next is the next thing you're looking for. General industry is 1910. Construction is 1926. Maritime has three books. So when you click on Maritime, you're going to see 1915, 17, and 18. Uh, those are all the three uh, parts for Maritime. And then agriculture is 28. Uh, state plans have their own part of 1952. Record keeping is something that all of everyone that's under OSHA has to think about. Some people are partially exempt, and I went through that on Tuesday. Uh, so you have to go back on my feed and make sure you watch Tuesdays if you need some record keeping help. But 1904 is also included as a part you should know. And not in here, you don't see this on this page, but you should also be aware of part 1903. Uh, that's how OSHA does their, uh, their inspections. So that's the 1903 part. If you're very well aware of record keeping, that is going to also lead you to some areas that are specific in general industry that says, like, uh, for instance, subpart O, which is uh, machine guarding. There are some record keeping parts in that subpart. Uh, so you would have uh, exceptions to that rule, if you will. So you should know that too. So that's the first thing is, you know, again, the basics 29 CFR 
and then whatever you are is the part. Um, if you're not aware of if you should go to construction or general industry, those are two different parts, right? So what does it mean for construction? What does it mean for general industry? If you are building anything for the first time, if you're remodeling anything, if you are painting or decorating something, uh, then you are in construction. If you are manufacturing something, if you're selling, if you're uh, warehousing, uh, any of those uh, industries, grocery stores, retail, that's general industry. Electrical covers both. There's electrical and construction. There's electrical in general industry. You just have to make sure you figure out, am I doing this activity to maintain this piece of equipment or the structure or whatever? Or am I doing this thing to rehab it, to build it, or to actually uh, decorate it or paint it? Then you're in construction. So that's going to be the difference between the two parts. So you got to make sure you know the differences there so you'll, you'll choose the right book. So that's the other thing that you really want to make sure is picking the right book. So let's go back. So all the different parts over here, I'm going to start with general industry, which is 1910. So that's the part. And now the next thing you need to know is there's a letter after each part which is going to be your sub part. And uh, after a while, it just kind of gets ridiculous with the parts and sub parts, and then you break it down into paragraphs. But I just want to show you for your uh, knowledge. I am going to click on an easy one because a lot of people are aware of subpart D, which is the walking and working surface. So I'm going to click on subpart D. And let's say um, the best way to really understand the CFRs is this. Uh, first, if you know a specific piece of equipment, you could just go ahead and go into the table of contents, look up that specific piece of equipment, and then you could work it that way. If not, then the next best thing to do is to uh, look up the activity. What is the person doing? And that's going to generally lead you to which book and then which subpart to pick. So the subpart O is machine guarding, but subpart D, where you're seeing here, is walking and working surface. So this is how you would break down the, the different subparts, if you will. Uh, on OSHA's website, I actually use two things. I use OSHA's rep website, and then I also have uh, regs to go which is a man-com... Um, uh, they're, I guess, a publisher. That might be a way of saying it, a Mancom publisher. And they published the CFR. So I use that uh, quite a bit myself too. And I've been using it for a long time. So if you don't have Mancom or uh, actual CFR, you could go ahead and look at, or, and that's a physical copy that you could hold in your hand. Go ahead and use the OSHA website. That's the best way to do. But if you uh, if you do want to buy a physical copy, I would suggest Mancom, and that's M-A-N-C-O-M-M. -M. Uh, that's a, a great company to use. So I am going to show you, if you see a hyperlink anywhere under these uh, federal regulations in the parts and subparts, the hyperlinks will lead you to uh, another what they call letter of interpretation. So that's that's a good way of doing that one. So I'm going to look at this over here, which is going to tell you for the purpose of OSHA, what does construction work mean? I explained it to you, but just so I can show you the difference between part and paragraph. So we got part 1910. Subpart is the letter, always going to be a letter, which is B. And then the paragraph was related to that subpart. So I'm going to click on this where it says construction work. So paragraph A talks about the standard and it gives you uh, a little bit about the 1926 standard. And you'll notice that little letter in parentheses next to 1910 section 12. So that's the section. So 1910 section 12. Think of the dot as being section. And then the parentheses that has the A, think of that as being a paragraph. So you're looking at 1910, section 12, paragraph A. 
So let's look at paragraph B right here. This one and paragraph D over here um, will really tell you the distinguishing factor between construction and general industry. So what I explained to you earlier in the very beginning was construction is if you build it, alter it, repair it, paint it, or decorate it, then it is construction work. You got to go to 1926. Now, and that's the a very basic definition on that one. So that's section, the dot. Paragraph is the first letter in the parentheses. I'm going to go back on this one. It's probably better if you're following along with me to use the back button uh, only because of the way OSHA does this, you'll end up going back to the full letter of all the parts and it'll take you a little while to click through. So the back button works a lot better for this one. Again, any questions or comments, anything that's going on with you right now that you need some OSHA help, go ahead and let me know and I'll help you out with that, even though it may not be on the, the topic with the parts and subparts and understanding how to read the CFRs. Uh, but this is definitely going to, uh, this time that I want to spend, I want to make sure that I'm going to help you guys out with uh, whatever that you need with your current OSHA uh, issues. So that's my, my pledge to you right now. So let's go into the second uh, thing that you really need to know is after the paragraphs, there's a bunch of delineations underneath that. So I'm going to show you a big one here that has many different parts. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to take you over to where you have your uh, environmental control. So general environmental controls. Here is permit required confined space. And then here's another one with uh, control of hazardous energy, lockout, tag out. So it's section 147. We'll click on this one. And now you're gonna start seeing another set of parentheses after the paragraph. So section 147, paragraph and uh, it's important to get the wording right, unfortunately. It's like ridiculous in some stages that you're going to end up having to learn all the wording. But if you are faced with some sort of um, interaction with OSHA, they're going to use these terms. They're going to understand these terms. So it's important that you understand them as well uh, so that you guys can start speaking the same language. So uh, when you're looking at this one, you're going to say, especially with this lockout tag out section, you scroll down. It's section 147, paragraph A, sub paragraph 1, and then sub sub paragraph Roman numeral I, or Roman numeral 1, or some people will say I. So what you're really saying in this case is the paragraph A is this is under section 147, and then number 1 is the sub part or sub paragraph of A, Roman numeral one is subparagraph of one to a. So kind of think of it as this way. It's like a you got like one line here, and then you got another one going down this way, and then you got another one going down, kind of like stair step. And that's how the standards are all written. So you have paragraphs, sub subs, sub to that sub, sub to that sub, and uh, it's really ridiculous to have to say that all the time but over here where there's exceptions to lockout tag out where it says oil and gas well drilling and servicing this will be said 1946 or part 1910 section 147 paragraph a sub paragraph one sub sub paragraph i i sub sub paragraph sub 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 paragraph excuse me e and e is going to be always capitalized so E refers to II, II refers to 1, 1 refers to A, and A is a paragraph of 147. It's confusing, right? <laughs> it's really ridiculous that you have to think that way, but in order for you to get a good understanding of number one, uh, a place marker, it'll show you exactly where you are when you're flipping through the physical book, uh, but then also it's going to help you when you're looking at... Um, uh, when you're looking 
are at least interacting with the compliance officer, then you and the compliance officer will, will pretty much be talking the same language. Uh, so that's the example of what you would have for truly how would you go through those standards. The other thing that I see with this, especially when you're talking about uh, going through the standards, understanding the standards, uh, the other thing that I really would, would say that you should get a good grasp on is uh, especially if you are looking through a physical copy of the CFR, you want to look for terms and definitions. And then you're also going to see a little bit of, uh, of fine print on some of the uh, standards. Really look at the fine print when they're there. Not all of the standards have fine print, but when they are there, read them very, very closely because that's going to probably determine a few things for you. Uh, first, it's going to show you uh, what there was context, if any, uh, to the paragraph you're looking at. And then the other thing I might tell you is if there's an exception or, or something similar to that. So those were kind of, it, it hurts the eye sometimes as you're kind of looking in and you like got, got your little micro, micro, uh, microscope or you know, magnifying glass. How's that? That's even better, right? Uh, so you're looking in there. Get real close to the words, look at those things, and, and it does help uh, give you some more context. All right, if there's any questions, comments, anything that you want to add or have a, a, me answer for you, go ahead and put it in the comment box for me, and then I'll be able to uh, make sure I answer that for you. Uh, that is the goal, so I can make sure I, I get all your questions in during this time period. And so I am going to call this one a day then, since I've got no questions and comments on this one. Uh, this, unfortunately, I can't put it on the OSHA compliance help group uh, in its current phase, uh, so I might end up having to upload it in a different way. So, all right, good deal. Well, I appreciate everyone hanging out with me. And uh, if you have a chance, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. So I've got the Safety Consultant uh, podcast. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, just go ahead and uh, just look for Safety Consultant with Sheldon Primus. And then I'm there. Subscribe to it. Share it with a friend. That'd be awesome if you can. And, uh, and that will help me out. If you so desire, you could also rate it too. And that's going to be awesome because uh, they look for that and all those services for algorithms to uh, boost me up in the rating. So go ahead and help me out if you can. All right, good deal. Well, thank you so much for uh, for listening and yeah, go get them. Mm -hmm.